before we start our conversation, let's begin as we, as we always do with what I call the tour de table. And I'm going to ask each of you to tell your name, what you do, and why you're interested in this topic. Try to be brief and keep it under a minute. So why don't we begin with uh, Rachel? Hi. Well, thank you so much for having me on this podcast. And I couldn't agree more that uh, a wealth of perspectives on anything is, is very helpful. So, uh, and it's great to meet all of you because you're, you're all new to me. Um, I run a company called the Community Roundtable. We do research about communities and have for the last 11 years. And so that's my interest. And uh, my, the, the broader interest in community is I think community is how individuals thrive. And so I think it's a better model for how we come together and work and, and do all sorts of things. But that's wonderful. Who I am. Thank you, Rachel, for being here. Michelle? Yes, um, so I'm originally from Belgium. I live in Chiang Mai, Thailand most of the time. And uh, my interest in communities is maybe not communities in general, but uh, I've been studying in particular open source communities, so productive communities um, and how that works. And, and then I've been extending it uh, then to urban commons. So people who try to mutualize you know organic food or energy co-ops and lately i look actually at people who make things so like um we can talk about it later but um there are in europe 120 multi-factories where cross people band together um so i you know i look at how that works and everything and i'm the founder of the p2p foundation which is specialized in these topics Fascinating. Thank you for being here. Janai? Thank you, Virginia. Um, so I am Turkish. Uh, I live in Ibiza, Spain, and uh, I'm a conscious business model and cultural innovation designer, which both focuses on the individual and the communal evolution. My interest in this topic is um, really, I was always interested in it since uh, 2000, I have been building communities all around the world for my university, then for several telco operators, retail companies. Then I understood actually it's vice versa. Communities exist and then organizations can serve to the values of communities. And with this uh, pandemic and the recent events that we see all around the world, we see the importance of communities. And I am so excited to be here with these amazing panelists to dig, dig dive uh, into this topic together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janai, for leading this conversation and I'll come back to you. Um, and then finally, Richard. Hi, yeah, thank you for having me. Um, my interest in communities, it takes a few steps. So I really like um, the work of Rianne Eisler, who's a feminist who started publishing in the 80s and is still publishing great work now. And she talks about how relationships can basically either be uh, in the domination mode or in a partnership mode. And, and I, I really appreciate that frame for diagnosing what's going wrong in the world. There's too much domination, not enough partnership. And so at first I was, uh, I've got an engineering background. So I was making technology for decentralized organizations, for organizations that can function without a domination hierarchy. And then I uh, sort of appreciated the limits of technology and then we, we created a, well, what's essentially a management consultancy for non-hierarchical organizations. And now my work is getting more and more into community development because at least my hypothesis for now is that like the obstacle to these more partnership oriented ways of working, it's a cultural thing more so than it is any um, specific technological piece or any organizational piece. It's really about like the ways that we relate to each other, our values, expectations, behaviors, forms of communication, norms, rituals, language, all this sort of stuff. So it's a culture piece and that really community is the space that we cultivate culture, I think. So that's where I'm at now. Fascinating. You're already giving me some uh, nuggets, communities where we cultivate culture. Um, thank you so much, Richard, for being here. So it's really hard to have a conversation. I don't know if you agree with this, but uh, today without talking about the current event and the world crisis. However, it seems to me that understanding the power of communities is actually crucial to finding alternatives to our current economy and system in place. One of our episodes on activism 
in which Richard, you participated, we discuss how trust is one of the few forces that holds our world together. It's almost like the glue of our society. And the lack of trust in leaders throughout the world that we're currently experiencing might be one of the reasons why we're witnessing the collapse of our old systems. Um, during that episode on activism, we also talked about how in order to make real impactful change, individuals must find their kindred communities, uh, not only to become accountable, but also to bring changes in the world. So I'm really excited by this discussion because I'm personally part of a cooperative community powered by women of experience with a new leadership model. So I'm looking for pointers and a better understanding of the structures and processes to support the blooming of communities. So let's begin this conversation and perhaps uh, Janae, would you like to start by telling us in your perspective, how can organizations benefit from communities within their current structure? 